Thank you very much. And I now call on Monica Lennon to open for the Labour Party to be followed by Alison Johnson. Monica Lennon. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm pleased to be opening for Scottish Labour in this debate. And I'd like to thank the Health and Sport Committee for its carefully considered report. And from listening to the convener, Lewis MacDonald, it is clear that the committee went to great lengths to gather evidence and to scrutinise the health and care staff in Scotland Bill. And the committee's recommendations reflect that, that rich body of evidence. And I agree that the Scottish Government would do well to, to remain open to, to persuasion because there, there clearly is some room for improvement. Some of the committee's recommendations have been reinforced in the, the many stakeholder briefings that we've gratefully received ahead of this debate. This has been a, a milestone year for health. The, this year, the, or this summer, the, the Chamber and indeed the country came together to mark our NHS at 70, and we had a lot to celebrate. Our health service has saved and transformed countless lives. All of us in this chamber will have a close personal affinity with the NHS. Moving forward, the integration of health and social care has the potential to be transformative. There are, however, underlying challenges that we must get to grip with in order to reduce the levels of ill health and health inequalities which persist. Under this government, we're not yet seeing enough progress on that front. The Cabinet Secretary said we are living longer, but we're not yet living healthier lives. And this matters because all of us have a right to health and want to live good, healthy lives. But it's also a matter of urgency because our health and social care services are struggling to cope. The Cabinet Secretary, in her response to the committee stage one report, says that the Scottish Government understands the pressure staff are facing. Now, we know that the Cabinet Secretary has inherited this bill. I'm not convinced with all the pressures facing the NHS, this is perhaps the bill she would have wanted, but I know she's sticking with it and Scottish Labour will play her part to, to improve the bill and to strengthen it. And we are eager to work with the Cabinet Secretary and her team in, in the widest terms possible. But as we debate the Health and Care Staffing Scotland Bill today, our focus has to remain on outcomes and what difference this legislation could make to the health and well-being of our constituents and our loved ones. Scotland's health and social care workforce is working tirelessly to provide the very best of care. It can't work any harder. It's far from easy. And Miles Briggs has talked already about nursing. And we know, according to the RCN, that there are times when staff are just not able to meet the needs of their patients due to staffing shortages, issues with the skill mix of teams and ever-increasing demand on services. And in the past few weeks, I've seen this firsthand uh, as my own mum has spent far too much time in hospital. So none of us are detached from that. It's, it's very real and, and it's happening now. And it must concern the Cabinet Secretary that Audit Scotland warns that the NHS in Scotland is not financially sustainable and its performance um, continues to decline. Today, we've had another Section 22 report on NHS Tayside and it's extremely serious. We have a health board that is facing perpetual financial crisis and the buck does stop with the Scottish Government. Currently, certainly. Thank you. I'm grateful to Ms Lennon to take an intervention. It's just in order to make sure that we have the absolutely correct context, I'm sure Ms Lennon will agree with me that the Section 22 order on uh, NHS Tayside re refers to the last financial year and that the Audit Scotland report by uh, the Auditor General's own acknowledgement did not, because it could not at that point, take account of the medium term financial framework that I published. So in order to be sure that we're getting an accurate picture of the current state of play, perhaps we just need to add those extra bits of context in. Monica Lennon. Thank you. No, I'm glad the Cabinet Secretary put on the record her, her medium term framework, but there is no denying that, again, we have a very serious report from the Auditor General, and I'm sure that the Audit Committee will pick that up and scrutinise that in, in due course. But currently in the NHS, there are enough job vacancies to fill two Scottish hospitals. The BMA say that the true number of consultant vacancies is double that of the official figures from ISD. Scottish Care points to a shocking 32% vacancy rate in, in nursing in social care and the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh say that unless staffing gaps are resolved, safe, safe staffing levels will remain a dream rather than a reality. 
So what will this bill do to address this staffing crisis? The Cabinet Secretary is clear that the bill is about workload planning, it's not about workforce planning. But put simply, there must be enough staff available to deal with the high workloads that NHS staff are experiencing. And again, there's, there's plenty of work that the Scottish Government has underway, and, and I look to the Public Health Minister and, and the work that he's um, focusing on right now in terms of alcohol and drugs. All of that's really important, because to go back to my earlier remarks, this is about prevention, and we've not seen enough preventative action to reduce the pressure on the NHS. So this bill is hopefully part of a, a wider, new, radical approach to health and social care workforce planning, which is person-centred. From Unison to the BMA, the message is really, really loud and clear that just putting existing duties into statute is not going to change anything uh, by itself. The Committee Stage 1 report highlights several areas of concern about the bill. The RCN highlight the importance of ongoing monitoring and the escalation of risks. Um, if, safe, if safe staffing levels fall below the requirement, there must be a quick, clear and effective route to escalation. These tools must work in real time so that if any health professional who finds himself on an understaffed ward can alert this problem. And we've had dozens of, of briefings, for example, the Royal College of Physicians and the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists highlight the importance of workforce planning supporting the new multidisciplinary models of care. Um, I'm getting to, to closure, uh, presiding officer. The bill aims to give parity between health and social care by also setting out staffing duties and care services. However, we've heard from COSLA, the Coalition of Care and Support Providers and the SCVO that they're all concerned that the bill is unsuitable for the care sector and could undermine integration. So we have to be alive to these concerns and I know my colleague Alex Riley will want to say more. In conclusion, um, Scottish Labour welcomes any efforts to improve safe staffing and we do support the general principles of this bill but the bill isn't going to fix health and social care's workforce crisis by itself. NHS staff are facing burnout. Um, I was grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for taking my intervention on that point earlier and I know she does take these matters very seriously and in terms of social care um, that sector needs to be overhauled because conditions are, are quite frankly not good enough for many social care staff. Scottish Labour believes that health and social care should be focused no, on... No, no, no. When you say in conclusion, <laughs> I think it means something to us. Not in conclusion, here comes another in chapter. In conclusion, we focus on the outcomes and we'll work with the government and others That's on absolutely. amendments to secure that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I know that trick. I've used it myself. Uh, I now call Alison Johnson.